Welcome to another spirit-filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video. As well, I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Let's lift our hands to heaven and ask the Lord to give us a very mighty encounter even by his word go ahead and pray speak to the lord the bible declares for everyone that asketh receiveth everyone who seeks finds and to him that knocks it shall be opened someone is praying give me an encounter tonight indeed that i will soar indeed that i will soar Jesus name we pray may I may I encourage us to pay very diligent attention um, we have um, a very brief session tonight and it is my prayer that it will not just be a waste of our time in the name of Jesus that our hearts will be opened to learn I was greatly inspired by Reverend Edwin's charge before I came not because um, I was hearing what he was saying for the first time but I was assimilating once again the truthfulness of what he was saying how that there are people who can walk and faint as a result there are those who will run and even with that advantage of speed will be weary are we together there are those who can soar in fact, to add to what he has said, there is a difference between flying and soaring. Flying would still require your effort, even though you are above the ground. But soaring, you had taken advantage of the wind. Hallelujah. And so, truly the choice is yours. He said, I set before you life and death. I set before you blessing and cursing. It is my prayer that this will not just be one of the many conferences, but that something definite will rest upon your spirit, man. So, Father, speak to our hearts and help us tonight. We have come to encounter your wisdom. Let your word come with power. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. You are Ebenezer You are Ebenezer That's my testimony You are Ebenezer You are How do you explain a life with no advantage? How do you explain an individual who lost his father, lost his mother, and yet will defy everything that makes for mediocrity to become great? How do you explain an individual who is taken from a village and now is being celebrated across the globe whether as a man or a woman how do you explain individuals who in spite of their speech impediment having a plethora of limitations and yet they still rise like the devil does not exist how do you explain that every system of advantage does not seem to be there and while you are prophesying and predicting their doom they are rising by an agency that you cannot even explain. I didn't raise this song just to start preaching. You see, when I'm on stage, in as much as I compose myself to minister to people, I preach from a standpoint of truthfulness. I meditate and believe the things that I'm thinking about. I'm just thinking about what God is able to do. And that, you, that I, I'm praying that you will actually believe he can do it in your life. 
there are certain manifestations and certain dimensions of living that it defies any kind of explanation you want to give you see anything plus God anything at all plus God is equal to the result he puts there one plus one is equal to two based on the law of logic and arithmetic are we together now yes but anything plus God in it do not even make an attempt to predict what it can become a failure plus God can become a sign and a wonder a mediocre plus God can become a sign and a wonder a stammerer plus God can become a prophet that brings people from the land of bondage into the land flowing with milk and honey there is no limit to the possibilities that exist in the life of a believer in Christ listen the life we've been called into is a life of tremendous advantage if and when you understand the systems that God has built to guarantee that advantage please listen very carefully just because you are saved does not guarantee that you will walk in the possibilities that this kingdom life provides Ephesians 4 18 they know not neither will they understand they walk on in darkness and the Bible says all the foundations of the earth are out of course I just quoted Psalm 82 my apologies from verse 5 to 7 it says I have said ye are gods and all of you are children of the most high 7 says but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of the princes in Ephesians 4 18 it says having their understanding darkened being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in, in them because of the blindness of their heart hallelujah the faith life the spirit life the kingdom life is knowledge dependent and you see when it has to do with acquiring the knowledge that translates into authority there is a standard of knowledge you must attain unto hallelujah in first corinthians chapter 8 and verse 2 the bible says and let him that thinketh that he knoweth anything know that he does not know as he ought to know that means there is a standard you are not given the liberty to determine what you want to know just by yourself there is a standard that means if you must attain to this level of the anointing this level of favor this level of grace there is already a preset knowledge requirement you must rise on to that height so just saying I know something does not give you your result if we switch off the light in this room right now you can put on the little light of your phone it is light but not enough to swallow the darkness within the room so most believers have pieces of truth here and there a little knowledge about favor a little knowledge about speed a little knowledge about prayer a little knowledge about fasting and they are like tiny pieces of light and in the presence of reality they cannot do much hallelujah do you know the kind of speed that a plane do you know that every plane starts by walking then running then it runs at a speed that becomes unfair to keep running there is a level of speed that the ground can no longer take then it now begins to soar so soaring is a possibility with that plane but it does not mean that it would decide its speed no the build up of the plane already there is a speed requirement it is a risk for the pilot to try to soar until that speed range has come in are we together now many people try to soar but what backs you to rise is not there so there are all kinds of destiny crashes like plane crashes very arrogant statements that cannot be defended by light and knowledge most of us here have flown many times and it does not matter whether it's a Boeing, doesn't matter whether it's a, a Bombardier Challenger, doesn't matter. It is the same principle. So when the plane starts moving, you would think it is too big and it cannot run. 
and then give it a little time. Once it gets to the runway, they now say, fasten your seatbelt. And it runs and runs. And the, all the pilot is doing is watching for a particular speed range. The moment it gets there, then it's ready to soar. It is a risk to try to soar in ignorance or limited knowledge. Let me show you something. Luke chapter 1, please. We're reading the first four verses. If God is speaking to us already, please say amen. amen. It says, for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, verse 2. It says, even as they were delivered unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word. I want you to read verse 3 together. Ready? One to read. It said, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of how many things? That means there is a level of spiritual understanding. It is within the possibilities of men to drive to a level of knowledge and intelligence with exactitude having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first to write to you that means i am writing to you from a standpoint of authority perfect understanding of all things verse 4 this is the reason that thou mightest know the certainty of those things wherein thou hast been instructed I don't just want you to believe it because I am saying it, he's saying. I want you to believe it because the things that are taught you are not cunningly devised fables. These are truths that can lift. So ladies and gentlemen, what you are hearing tonight and what you'll be hearing all through this conference, please do not make a mistake of trivializing them or cherry picking them it is arrogance respectfully speaking it is arrogance for a student to choose what to listen for from a lecturer the student is in the class to learn whether you like what the lecturer is teaching or not you have to be able to trust that the university that employed that lecturer vetted him enough and if you do not trust the lecturer and you decide to cherry pick what you want to pick and throw the rest there will be gaps in your knowledge and those gaps will make you ineffective later on in the future. A student is not at liberty to decide what he wants to learn. He sits down and learns what he needs to learn. Hallelujah. When the oil finished, the recommendation was go to them that sell. It didn't say go to God. Go to them that sell and buy. So are you ready for tonight? Romans chapter 9. I'll be taking a series of teachings tonight and then we'll wrap up tomorrow. Helped by God. Romans chapter 9 and verse 16. 9 and 16 of Romans. Paul was mentoring the church in Rome, helping them to mature in their understanding and in the matters of the spirit and he had this to say so then it is not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth but of God that showeth mercy hallelujah it is not remember we, we spoke about running and it is not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth let me tell you what that means the person who wills has done something noble because he's now in the realm of mind the mind He's already working on his mind. And we know the relationship between your mind and your results. He's done something commendable. But he's saying even that does not give a guarantee. And then him that run it is one who has gone a step further to take action. He said even in the presence of that action. It does not still give you a 100% guarantee. Because there are times that your boat is right. There are times that you are in the sea. That's where you should be when you want to catch fish. There are times that your skill is intact and yet you will not catch fish. Hallelujah. At that point, you don't need fishing skills again. You need the mercy of God. We're coming there. It is not of him that willeth. Now, he is not saying you should not will. He is not saying you should not run. But he said while you engage in these activities, factor it. 
at the back of your mind that there is a gap in the equation of greatness that only the size of God can fill. It is not all scientific. It is not all intellectual. Are we together? Run away from any man who does not have a God factor in the equation of his greatness. That is a risk there. There must be a part of your story you have to honestly admit that from here to here, I don't know what happened. I know that I prayed. There was prayer in that equation. I know that I fasted. I know that I listened. I know that he prophesied. But from this point to this point, if I'm to be honest, I know that I was carried on the wings of the Spirit. Are we together? Second scripture, please. Acts chapter 26 and verse 22. May this be someone's testimony. Acts chapter 26 and verse 22. Just the A part. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day. That means if you see me continuing, it's not just because I had the strength in myself to continue. The secret behind my continuity is that I have mastered the system of obtaining help. That means there is something God does to men to keep them moving. If you see anybody moving, the natural cause of men is that weariness should catch up with you eventually. So if you see that I'm making progress and you check the weariness factor and it's not there, I have outsourced an agency called help from God. Having therefore obtained help from God, I continue to this day. It doesn't tell us from when he started, but no matter how long I am still standing. And the secret is that I have obtained help from God. Help from God. Second Chronicles chapter 26. We'll read two verses and then I begin to teach. Verse 5 and verse 15. Second Chronicles chapter 26. The Bible says, speaking about Uzziah, it says he sought God in the days of Zechariah who had understanding in the visions of God. The Bible says, and as long as he sought the Lord, it says God made him to prosper. Who made him prosper? So we don't just prosper. The concept of self-made does not in, 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 it doesn't stand in the kingdom. It says God made him. Like you say, a woman made this cake, baked this cake, or cooked this. God made him. Until God came, he was not. God made him to prosper. Now verse 15. This is how it played out. The Bible says... And he made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men. Are we together? To be on the towers and upon the bulwarks. To shoot arrows and great stones with them. Please I'd like us to read the last sentence. Ready? One to read. And his name spread far abroad. For he was marvelously helped till he was strong. So when the Bible says God made him, it is another expression of God helped him. So God makes men by helping them. The realm of God's help is the realm where he makes men. He makes men, all men, by helping them. This is very powerful. In Psalm 121, first two verses, it says, I will lift up my eyes onto the hills. Are we together? He says, whence cometh my help? So he's talking about help and assistance here. Verse 2, my help, I don't know where yours comes from. It's a risk to speak for everybody. He says, my help. That means the Lord is not the only one who helps. But you can know who helped by the side effects or otherwise. He says, when you look at my life, I will tell you my help comes. Every help has address. You can know this one came from an uncle. This one came from your intellect. My help. Not our help. My help.
cometh from the Lord. There you see our word again, which made heavens and the earth. It is not only heavens and the earth that God makes. He can make anything. The heavens and the earth is only an example of what he can make. So the next time you look at a life and wonder, how did you transit this way? How is God doing this? Just know that he has had an encounter with the maker who is also called the helper. Please pay attention. You are about to learn something very powerful. So we have established the fact that we do not make progress just by intentions. As powerful as principles are, as powerful as obedience is, as powerful as complying with spiritual principles are, we have acknowledged and admitted that there is a, an equation in the rising and the excelling of any, any and every man that only God can give answers to. I know you worked hard, but what of waking up from the bed? What principle governs sleeping well and waking up? I understand that obedience can bring favor, but when you go to the, is it not in your Bible? It says, I lay me down and I slept. I waked for the Lord sustain me. Write this word help down, please. What does it mean to help? Ah, someone's life is changing. In the name of Jesus. Listen, this conference is bringing you to a point where you thoroughly understand the systems of the kingdom as far as the rising and the excelling of men is concerned. And this teaching immediately will strangle away the possibility of walking in pride because you will know immediately, like all others will know too, that there is a side to your life that cannot be credited to efforts or intelligence. A man can receive nothing except it is given. Help down please. Let's discuss that word. What does it mean to help? Whether to be helped or to help someone. The word help h-e-l-p i wrote a few things down and i want us to look at it very carefully number one to help means to make it easy or possible for someone to do or achieve something to make it easy or to make it possible for someone to do or achieve something by offering your service or offering your resources that's what it means to help. It's important that we define what help is so that you will know what is happening to you now and you will know what will follow you for the rest of your life. Are we together? Because somewhere in this teaching you are going to understand why the psalmist says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. When you... <laughs> you just write this down. To help means to make easy or possible for someone to do or achieve something that means the goal of help is to bring ease or to create possibilities are we together um let me have one of the protocol please come sir please stand here watch this everyone now my one hand my right hand is holding a mic so i don't have the liberty to hold this i'm trying to lift this are we together it does not mean I cannot lift it, but it, it will not be easy. I need to lift it for the next 10 minutes. But now, I may attempt to lift it. Now, he wants to help me. Watch now. What is his role now? His role is not to take away my responsibility. He is to provide a leverage to make it easy. Place your hand there. Now, watch this. If you are not seeing this guy and you are not seeing his hand, who will you give the credit to? You will say, how come this guy is holding this on one side? It's not even balanced. Yes, it is standing. But you did not know that there is somebody at the other side of my destiny. Listen, for many people, your life will be a mystery from this night. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. The same way I gave this illustration, I just prophesied over someone's destiny. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
It is only marvelous in our sight when it is the Lord's doing. If it is man's doing, it is natural to our sight. Please come again. Don't waste this revelation. Watch this. This is your spiritual life. This is your ministry. This is your finances. Ladies and gentlemen, this is you in Enugu state desiring to be a blessing to the nations. You are right here, but they need to see you. By your strength, you are limited. I will soar with you above the clouds. Father, you are king over the storm. And I will be still So to help does not mean to take over responsibility. Thank you, sir. To help means to make it easy. The assignment of help is to provide the leverage that brings ease and to create possibilities. There are some things that have no business happening. Please look at me. For instance, let's assume you were supposed to go through this door. And a time was already allocated. And after that time, the door would be closed. Are we together? But then you came late and the door was legitimately closed. So it was not being unfair to you. You simply did not meet the time. But if someone now says there is an advantage I have, either by reason of being a staff in that company or by reason of being an owner, I can give you my card. You swipe your card in front of that door and even though you were late, it does not take away the rule that whoever comes late should not access. The rule still stands. It only changed for you. You are helped when the rules change for you. So when God is helping you, you must be careful so that you do not teach people to be irresponsible. You must understand that it was something unique that was done for you. For instance, to our late night story, if I come, let's say it was to be shot by six, and I came 6.15 and the door was shut, we may be 10 there, but because of one person who gave me his card, if that door opens, I will not tell them, look, you can come late and go away with it. I was helped. That is my advantage. So when I'm in the room where those who came early, they knew that I came late and they're asking, what are you still doing here? And I tell them, you use meritocracy to get into this room, but I was helped by God. Helped by God. Helped by God. There are people who would turn back in destiny and be surprised and say you are not supposed to be here. By what means did you get here? Some trust in horses and others chariots. It says but we will trust in the name. Listen, before you talk a man down, make sure you verify that there is no system of divine help. Then you can talk. But if for any reason that man has found a way of obtaining help from God, get ready to say sorry and say it early because it will be more painful as the days progress. When God decides to help a man, ladies and gentlemen, all you will see at the other end of that help is a sign and a wonder. You are Ebenezer my helper you are so the goal of help remember please do not forget this that in communicating help the goal is number one to make it easy remember the first goal of help is ease to provide ease Number two, the second goal of help is to provide possibilities. Things that had no business happening, 
based on the natural cause of things they are now manipulated by a leverage you receive hallelujah in my definition i said to make easy or possible for someone to do or achieve something by offering your service or offering your resources please do not forget we are not just playing with words that means in helping someone if you are the one who is the helper there are only two ways you can help the person in need of help number one provide your service number two provide your resources your resources there can mean your leverage can mean money can mean whatever it is It is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth. It is not of him that do business or does business. It is not just of him that preaches. It is not just of him that is sincere. It is the Lord that shows men mercy. He says, having obtained help from God, I continue. Uzziah was marvelously helped. The Bible did not just say he was helped. He was helped in an unusual. It's already a marvel that he was helped. But now the Bible says he was marvelously helped. There are three biblical ways that God helps men. We'll take a bit tonight and then we'll finish up. Please do not forget. There are three scriptural ways God helps men. Every time you cry for help. Because remember the Bible says let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. Remember? It says that we may obtain mercy and find help. So we can, we can find that, we can find the grace that provides help even in times of need. Number one, the first way God helps men is by administering his mercy to men. The first biblical way God helps a man is by making you a recipient of his mercy. You know a man that has been helped or he's been helped by, it is impossible to say you were helped by God and we do not find mercy at the corridor of your life. The mercy of God is what opens up the door to his help. The first way God visits men to help them to assist them to provide possibilities in their life he provides that resource of his mercy someone shout mercy Amen. number two the second way God helps men is by exposing them to the ministry of men the second way God helps men is by exposing the ones in need of help to the ministry of men there is such a thing as the ministry of men. The third way God provides help in this kingdom is by granting you access to the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Write it down. These are the three biblical ways from Genesis to Revelation. Every time you find a man who has been helped by God, he was exposed to one more or all of these factors. Number one, access to the mercy of God. Number two, access to the ministry of men. Number three, access to the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Helped by God. By being a recipient of his mercy. Helped by God. By enjoying the ministry of men. Helped by God by enjoying the rich heritage of the ministry of the spirit outside of these three factors there is no possibility for man to obtain help from God are we together now so that when you are saying God help me you know what you are asking God help me means God show me mercy God help me means God send a man to my life 
God help me means reveal the Holy Spirit to me. You see, most believers, the reason why our Christian experience is not rich and constructive is because we say a lot of things and even pray a lot of things without understanding and definition. Are we together? Now when you go to pray and you say, Father, I obtain help. Your mind can partner with the word because you understand what you are saying. There is intelligence to your request. You already understand the dimensions of the help that can come. Help means mercy. Help means man. Help means the spirit of God. Is he not called the helper? That means if you obtain mercy and the ministry of men and the ministry of the spirit, it's like a tripartite signature that will be signed upon your life. It will be impossible, unmistakable for anyone to doubt where your help and your lifting came from. For others, you have obtained mercy but you have not enjoyed the ministry of men. For others, you have not enjoyed the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You do not even know him. This is the scope of my discussion with you through this conference. We are going to touch a bit on the subject of mercy because many people do not understand the mercy of God. I had to study the subject myself. The mercy of God the ministry of man and the ministry of the spirit there are other people who have ignored the ministry of the spirit simply because he's invisible are we together and so they love the ministry of men and that is wonderful but they will not pay attention to the ministry of the holy spirit because they have not learned they have not been taught the value the value of knowing the Holy Spirit and walking with the Holy Spirit. It is true that God helps men. Now, let me paint for you very quickly a picture of a man who does not have help in his life. It's important. Who, how do you know a man who is without help? There has to be a way of identifying who has not been helped so that you can help the person by exposing him to the pathway that leads to that help. Is that true? Please look up. Medically, there are many illnesses you can literally look at someone and know that the person is not feeling fine. Is that true? You don't need to be a doctor. When you are a doctor or a medical professional, it adds it, it's an added advantage because you can know but you can you can you can know that this person is not at the best state of health there are very clear indices are we together no joy no peace restlessness abnormal body temperature loss of appetite are we together the person is probably losing weight the inability to stand strong and several other things complications here and there let me paint for you the picture of a man who has not received help of God every time please look up every time your life becomes inexplicably difficult every time the law of seed time and harvest does not seem to work in your life it doesn't matter what you sow it looks like there is no harvest i'm not talking of money you understand what i mean i'm trying to paint a picture number two any man who does not receive the ministry of men it looks like the system around you ignores you and ignores the value you carry and the investment of God's grace upon your life. These are very clear indices that show you that you are on your own. You are not being helped by God. One of the clearest proof of being alone and without help is confusion. Confusion. 
confusion, absence of direction, absence of exactitude. That you seem to be under everything, under the yoke of men, under the yoke of spirits, under the yoke of systems and structures. Then you know that that individual has not experienced the help of God. How do you know that you have not experienced the help of God? When it is, listen, there is no advantage in your life to turn negative things around into that which makes for joy and testimony. For someone seated here, I just described you or described your family or described your experience, profitless labor, profitless living, spiritually, nothing is happening. Financially, nothing is happening. Destiny-wise, nothing is happening. Let me tell you the truth. It is possible that you are sincere. It is possible you are honest. But this is not an issue of just honesty or dishonesty. Have you been helped by God? Are we together? Let's talk about the first way God helps men. Mercy. May this be a revelation for someone. In the name of Jesus Christ. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 31. Let's read together. We'll find somewhere to pray. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. But thou, O oh Lord, art a shield for me. My glory, the lifter up of my head. Deuteronomy 4.31 Hallelujah. Are you ready? Let's read together. One to read. For the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee neither destroy thee nor forget the covenant of thy fathers which he swear unto them so it gives you a very powerful information about God that God is a merciful God God is a merciful God I took out time sir to study the subject of mercy because I'd heard a lot of teachings about the mercy of God and the concept and the narrative that most believers have received in the body of Christ about the mercy of God is that the mercy of God only relates to sinners. So they look at mercy only as a tool for redemption, you know, from sin to get an individual saved. So when you mention the language of mercy, describe the mercy of God in a very, in a very unusual and a very clear manner. Have mercy upon me. Now, there are two things you need to understand. I hope I've not lost you. If you want to understand the mercy of God, there are two things you need to understand. Number one, you need to know the nature of God. Without understanding the nature of God, you cannot understand his mercy. I have studied this myself. Number two, you have to understand the nature of man. These are the two important information that until and unless you have them, the revelation of mercy may not make sense to you. The, something about the nature of God is what makes you have the confidence to come and obtain mercy. And something about the nature of man is what will make you need mercy forever. Are we together? There is something about the nature of man that if understood, puts you perpetually in a position where you are in need of God's mercy that anytime you do not desire the mercy of God is because there is a level of ignorance in you about the nature of man the nature of God what does the Bible say about God first John chapter 4 and verse 8 the Bible says God is love please shout it people of God one more time say God is love one more time say God is love watch this the mercy of God is founded on his love that means this description about the character of God being love is what makes his administering mercy possible 
Are we together now? There is no possibility to show mercy. I will define mercy for you shortly. But that every time you obtain mercy from God, there is something about the nature of God that makes obtaining mercy a possibility and that indefinitely provided you are in need of his mercy reverend preach my message in the short charge that you gave sir i sat down there and i was thanking god for his giving imagery to my message using his own life and when he was celebrating and honoring our mother, he made a statement. He said, every time I am hungry, did you hear that? He said, when I'm hungry, I just go to mommy. Even if it is 12 midnight, take note. 12 midnight is an inconvenience. It is, it's not a time that, I mean, you don't get up and cook for someone as if, as if you're concocting a charm by 12 midnight. But that is how far love can go. And he said, as soon as she sees him, she will say, swallow or rise. Marvelously helped. This is, this, are, are we together now? That is the mercy of God. Now, he did not tell us it happened only once. He did not tell us it happened only two times. So for you to understand why mama kept doing that, you have to study something about her nature. Why does God keep showing mercy? God, are you not tired of me? Is it that there's something about, something about my life should irritate you by now? God's consistency is based on this quality that God is love. Are we together now? This is very powerful. Men can be tired. If I help you today and you come tomorrow and you come next week and say Calvary greetings, I'll say go back, please. I'm tired of this. I can't be, I can't be giving you food every day. This is not a restaurant. I've tried. Even God knows I've made my contribution. Call another destiny. My God. Someone's life is changing right now. Psalm 145 from verse 8 and 9. I'm showing you how God helps men. That the first way God helps men is to make his mercy accessible. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The psalmist is describing his knowledge of God. That in my walk with God, I have come to the conclusion that this God is gracious. He is compassionate. He is slow to anger. And he's rich in love rich in mercy so the Bible says God is love I can rest in that understanding so when you ask why God loves me my answer to you is that he is love why does God help why does God show mercy he loves you to a point that he tied the mercy to the morning. Do you know what it means to tie the morning to the, me to the mercy to the morning? It means it recycles. Just because he showed it yesterday like time, he can show it today again. I, I, I have a guarantee that my next week has mercy there. There is the potential of mercy. There is, listen, there is a kind of confidence that you have when you know that the mercy of God is part of the support systems you have in your life. You no longer are intimidated by your limitations because you know that mercy is there. The nature of God, love. I told you, you need to know the nature of man. Ready? <laughs> Isaiah 51 and verse 5. There is something about man, pastor, that if man does not understand, we will never be able to obtain help. You see, the human species, the fallen man, is proud and arrogant by default. Are we together now? So there is, there is an intrinsic stubbornness that is hidden in the fallen man. And until something about you is revealed to you, 
you will not be able to open up to receive mercy from God. Let's see that about man. It says, Psalm 55, not Isaiah, Psalm 51, sorry. Psalm 51 verse 5, not Isaiah. In iniquity, let me quote it very quickly. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity. Look up please. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Before you were born, right from when you were being formed, it was not only your organs that were being formed. The very nature of sin and rebellion followed that formation too. And he said, in sin, behold, I was shapen in iniquity. Look up, please. Do you know what this means? That means the best of us, unassisted by the mercy of God, we do not even know what our tendencies can be. Until you know this about yourself and you admit it, it does not make receiving mercy necessary. Are we together? When you become full of yourself, I can do it. I can make it by myself on my own. Is because you do not know the person speaking. Who would have looked at a young responsible shepherd and believed that in that shepherd was a murderer? If you had looked at David, mama, that's the kind of person you would recommend for your daughter. Is that not so? A responsible gentleman who can almost die for his father's donkey. It means he can die for your daughter. And yet you do not know that in that innocent man is a murderer growing. There are many things that are hidden in us that just because it has not manifested yet, it doesn't mean it is not there. Man of God, listen to me. I know that you are a serious man of God and you are doing ministry. You have never encountered a challenge that makes your prayer life to be troubled. You still have sponsors. So you may not need the mercy of God. It takes mercy to stand. Ask anybody who has tried to fall. Not being, not falling by Satan or sin or whatever. Just the reality of life. Hallelujah. You see people take energy drink before they start marathon. The person who is not running is taking normal water and he doesn't care. And frankly, he doesn't need it because he's not going anywhere. Are we together? But the day he, he does not find a way of, of, you know, revitalizing his organ and then he tries to run a marathon, he may not even cross two or three rounds and he will die there because it takes energy and stamina. Please hear me. Look up, please. When you know this about the nature of man, you will not wait until the day your tendencies shock you and disappoint you. Way before you get to that point, you will anchor yourself on God's mercy. Are we together? You call yourself faithful, you say, me, God forbid, I will never touch anybody's money. You are only speaking relative to your reality now. Your wife has not become sick unto death. Your mother has not become sick unto death. There are many wrong things you do that can be done out of love, not out of evil. Hmm. Are we together? For instance, you can vow and say, God forbid me, I will never go to a herbalist. I'd rather die. You are right based on the ignorance that surrounds you. The day someone you love looks at you and says, my daughter, is this how you will watch me as your mother die? You wouldn't know when you will go to a shrine by yourself with the chicken or the goat or whatever. You would drag it by yourself. Listen, when the Bible says the heart of man is desperately wicked, don't let your life testify of it. Find help first. It is, am I, are you getting blessed tonight? We are discussing help. So when you see men who, are, who live in the reality of God's mercy. They are not just people who God gave mercy to. They are those who knew something about themselves. God forbid, I can't withhold anything from God. Me? How many things do you have first? We need to find out what you have to know what you can withhold and not withhold. A bank account of 5,000 naira with no responsibility, of course, you can give everything. 
but as Abraham take now thy son it's not just thy son thy 25 year old son that you got from waiting can I tell you the truth anytime you are tempted to believe that your stamina in the kingdom and in the faith is based on anything you have done by yourself repent quickly because there is a lesson that you are programming that you will learn that's why you see our fathers the older they get the more silent they become because they've seen too many things with their life and their conclusion is that mercy bar let it remain with me now you understand the prayer surely goodness and mercy we say it after service on your way out you don't even need it you don't like it you don't say it with passion you don't even understand it what you really want is surely breakthrough and for God's sake an open door follow me but you just say surely goodness and mercy can I tell you blessed is the man who lives in the realm of God's mercy show me a man who has found a way of anchoring in God's mercy forget about that man as far as life is concerned he has cheated life please listen to me I came to hand over something to you tonight that will change your life that is why when men celebrate us we know we don't have the liberty to say it all the time but there is something we know there is a condition that has kept the mercy of God perpetually in our lives. There is something about the nature of man. The Bible says, in iniquity. I don't know my tendencies. I don't know the hatred that can come from my heart. I don't know the jealousy that can come from my heart. Are we together? I don't even know if there is a murderer standing here talking. And I will not dare to be arrogant because many made that kind of mouth until they fell like a pack of cards haven't therefore obtained help I continue when you see anybody who is standing and doing exploits for the kingdom when they clap for us just for the sake of honor because the Bible allows it we just say thank God but when we go back and we're alone this is our position you look past my sin, my guilt, my shame for your love. You look beyond me. You look beyond me. Listen, can I tell you? That's why I told you tonight's teaching will extract that arrogance component. You will now see that when you see people who are humble, it's not an issue of your personality, it's a revelation. There is something about the, your nature that if you understand, the result of that revelation is humility. Humility is not an impartation. There is no impartation of humility. No. Humility is the resultant effect of a careful analysis of your life with God and without God. And you come to the conclusion that my zone of safety is to remain perpetually in the mercy of God. Are we together? It is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth. Hear me. There are many people who were sincere. At, at the time they had an accident and died, they were praying in tongues. There were many pastors who confessed the word like you did. Even at the point of killing them by bandits, they said, I will not die. And as they shot the gun, they died immediately. Is someone learning? I have seen pastors who fast more than me, pray more than me sincerely. We are talking of people who love God. Dimensions of consecration that you will not even come close to. And sometimes these people will come and say, Apostle, why is this ministry not working? I sincerely love God and I know they are not lying. If we probably were ranked spiritually, some of us would be far, far somewhere while these people are there and yet nothing seems to happen it is that revelation that keeps you so when men are clapping as though you are a winner you are a winner but you know the leverage that brought you there
Hello, beloved in Christ. We hope this message was a blessing to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them. Because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.